Juan Gustave here with my review of the Nerf Mega Thunderhawk. This is a blaster, of course, from Nerf's Mega line that features a bolt action priming side and is fed by a harmonica style clip which feeds from side to side. Now, it holds 10 darts. It comes with a couple of integrated features, including a bipod and this goofy extendable front end that serves literally zero purpose other than to allow Nerf to market this as the longest blaster currently on the market. I, I'm pretty sure that's the only reason why they made that thing do that, plus then they can charge a higher price. Yes, I, I do feel that way about Nerf. But what it is, is a very large bulky blaster that holds 10 of the mega sized darts. And I'm going to have a already uploaded video of this compared to the Nerf Mega Centurion up and behind me on the wall there where I do a range test, so if you want to see performance of this, firing both Nerf's standard whistling type darts as well as the aftermarket uh, darts here that I'm holding, I'll have that video already up and I'll put a link in the description or in the card above. Check out for that. Now, what this is, is of course then again a mega firing blaster. It retails for about $40. You can find it now for around $30, $35 if you look carefully. But retailing for that makes it one of the more expensive blasters. And it was intended to take the place from here. It was meant to take the place of that Centurion. That's why it's definitely something I'll be comparing in this review multiple times. Now, what it is, is a large blaster with a high price tag and some flaws. Yes, this review I'm going to go straight into, unfortunately, the negative part of the blaster because there's not a lot on the side of positives. Actually, I found very few positives. I've been using this for months now in order to see if what I have experienced is isolated or if it's going to continuously happen to somebody. Now, at least in my example, I have had a number of misfires, jams, and uh, feed problems from the clip. I've also had some uh, issues with this whole section here, just popping out at the wrong time, getting in the way, darts hitting it. Even though it's huge and it should be out of the way, part of it is that sometimes this clip which, it's a large clip. There's some weight to it. It's plastic, yes, but when you load this thing full of 10 darts, which of course, you just take those darts, place them in, they do actually have a good contact point to the clip. I've shown this in some videos where the darts will fall way down in. This one actually has a very good contact point. It contacts the dart at least about a, a full inch. So there is a pretty good air seal there. But once this thing's loaded up with darts, there's some weight there, and it's more weight than the retaining mechanism that you hear the little indexing. It's more than it can cope with. So as you're running around, that little clip actually will slide side to side as you're running and jumping around with the blaster. Now, if you were just to simply flip out the bipod, sit it down, and carefully advance the bolt, it functions fine. The problems all arise as soon as you start to move. And only thing I can think is that Nerf didn't take into account that I don't care if you're a kid or adult, whatever, I don't care if you're playing serious Nerf at an event or if you're just playing in the backyard with your family. Who sits still? Who just sits there and, and takes pot shots at everyone? Most everybody eventually grabs the blaster, gets up, and chases somebody down. And I've got a husband versus wife Nerf War coming up, a, a video of that, where this blaster with my downfall. Against, going out against my wife who had just the uh, pump action Nerf Roto Fury, she was able to take advantage of multiple misfires, jams, and, and just flopped out darts that just barely fell out of the barrel. Because this thing has so many problems as soon as you try to play a run and gun style, which is how I play. I don't care if it's just me and her playing or if I'm actually going to an event and playing against other adults elsewhere in a more competitive uh, scene. This thing cannot do that very well. And that's something that I don't, I don't care if you're a fan of Nerf like me or if you're just a parent trying to buy something for your kid that, that you want to see. Will it have problems? Will my kid complain about that? Or me as an adult, will I have some issues and regret my purchase? I have a big feeling that a lot of people who have either bought this or are going to buy it will have regrets. And that's why I'm going to already go and jump to the conclusion in the end. I can't recommend this blaster. And going back to the video where I did a range test of this compared to that Centurion. 
This is a newer generation blaster that underperforms compared to its previous generation. And that is a big problem. When technology advances, normally performance increases. Busby's, I'm going to use Busby because I am a huge Busby fan. I make no, no, uh, no attempt to hide that. They're a good company, makes good products at a higher value than others, than other products in the same uh, field of blasters. Their Tyrant was out years ago. Outperforms this thing, hands down. It's much more reliable. It feeds better. But my purpose of bringing Busby up is this. And I'll use X-Shot, I'll use Dart Zone, I'll use basically all of Nerf's competitors. Every one of their newer products has increased the performance just a little bit. This one has taken a step back. This one underperforms compared to the Centurion. And it comes with an integrated clip that's not supposed to be removable. I found my retaining mechanism doesn't actually retain it. So I'm able to rip it right out. And that's just a flaw in the design. They, the Centurion used magazines. Well, yes, they only held six, but you can easily carry two, three, four. Now you've multiplied your ammo capacity with a quickly changeable magazine. This thing, they're not, they don't sell spare clips. Yes, we can 3D print them. People are out there that do it. They even, even 3D print a uh, replacement that has multiple slots in it for making a shotgun effect of standard sized darts. That's all neat, that's all fun, and that's that's where this has a little bit of maybe a possible use. But as a blaster that is gonna be picked up and purchased a lot of times for a kid to enjoy, it has flaws and it's expensive. At around about a $40 retail price, you're looking at something that kid runs around, that clip goes in the middle, he's gonna go trying to fire it, and I will do I will replicate it here. It'll jump into the middle and then all of a sudden that dart just fired off to the left three feet of where I aimed and I just aimed at a leather chair that's 10 feet in front of me and it missed the chair. So that's a problem and that happened a lot in my testing and then again sometimes it would even, wouldn't even fire the dart properly and it would hit it would hit against this housing. Again that's a problem and while running this whole big thing would fall over and come open and all of a sudden I'd end up kicking it or hitting it and a couple times when I was running around with this thing and that happened, I actually kicked it and kicked the blaster right out of my hand. That's a problem. Those are all things. This should have had a locking mechanism. You know, if they're going to charge 40 bucks for a blaster like this, this should have had like a pin type locking mechanism to where if I don't want it to open, it doesn't come open. It doesn't, it doesn't just flop open whenever it feels like it. And the clip doesn't slide around side to side. That's, those are all inherent engineering issues. And included in the bipod, it works fine. Until, again, you stick this humongous front housing out. Now you try to set it on something. If you were to leave this sitting there, it falls forward. Because of the weight, the weight's all in front of that bipod. Even with the blaster mechanism being back here, this is heavier. So running around with that would be heavy for a kid. Running around with that would be heavy for a smaller adult. Running around like that looks completely goofy and not in a good way i like silly fun goofy things that's i mean we're adults playing with toys and yeah but this is not goofy in a good way it's almost tacky and i do i do honestly believe that they just threw that on there so they can say it's the biggest blaster on the market or longest blaster and with all the flaws the reduced performance the actual function issues it's much like the Zombie Strike Rip Chain that I tested out a couple of, and both examples had it, mechanical issues that were inherently flawed from the factory. This thing has problems that, yes, they can be fixed with modding, but you shouldn't have to. You should be able to open a blaster out of the package, hand it off to somebody. If it's an adult buying it as a gift for their kid, they should be able to say, here's something to have fun with. It's not going to be frustrating for whoever they give it to, or if they're using it for themselves, you shouldn't have a frustrating experience where you have to tinker with something to make it work properly. If you want to tinker with it to make it work better, fine. That's the whole point of the tinkering and the modding that we do in the Nerf community, is to make something better. Not to make something work the way it was supposed to from, from the factory. We pay our money to have a functional product. This has functional issues, much like those Zombie Strike Rip Chains that I looked at months ago. 
And that's where the problem comes, and that's why I cannot recommend this blaster unless you know what you're getting into and you want this blaster because you want to tinker with the clip. That's literally the only reason to buy it, is you want to open it up, you want to gut it, you want to maybe make it changeable clips to switch it out to a shotgun effect. There are people on YouTube that have done that, Make Test Battle did that, and it looks really, I believe that's who did it. Uh, search it up. Let's search up the Thunderhawk shotgun uh, mods on YouTube, and you'll probably find that for yourself. And I've seen I've seen where people have 3D printed, printed the replacement clips that even fired other ammo types instead of just shotgunning it. But there are things you can do with it. But that's in the modding realm of things. That's not in the I want to purchase a toy for my kid realm, or I want to grab this off the shelf for myself, and I just want to have fun. I don't want to have to tinker. This doesn't allow you to do that. It has flaws, it has failures, and it is expensive. Coming up, Nerf has the new uh, Megalodon, which I think is going to fix all of the problems that are inherent with this, and it looks to be retailing for about the exact same price. And already out of the market was the Twin Shock, which is a pump action uh, shotgun style. It fires two uh, in, in two rows. It has a total of, I believe it was 10, which is the same capacity as this. The Megalodon holds more than this, actually double. I believe it has a 20 round capacity. I could be wrong. I haven't got one yet to test, but I do believe that that and the Twin Shock are far better choices if you want to purchase a Nerf Mega Blaster. Uh, the Twin Shock is already better than this blaster in every way, shape, and form. And it doesn't have this goofy thing sticking out the front. And then of course you have blasters that are already out on the market like the Roto Fury that you can find everywhere. It's maybe not still in stores, but you can thrift those, or the Busby Tyrant. Other options that are out there, either secondhand or new on the market, new on the market, again, look for the Twin Shock or the Neglodon that's coming out soon. I do believe those are far better options than what this presents. But this is Mungus Jake with my review of the Nerf Mega Thunderhawk. Again, I cannot recommend this blaster at all, unless you know that you're going to go into gutting it and tinkering with it to make it work properly or to improve its function. If you're just wanting to buy something, avoid this. This is my Jake. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was informative, and I hope it leads you to a better informed purchasing decision or the decision to not purchase. But I will put a link where you can find this blaster if you still want to buy it. But again, this is my Jake, and I, think, I do thank you for watching.